Today, we're going to talk about something really important, how folks with age-related macular degeneration, or AMD for short, can take back their independence. And the key is something called low vision rehabilitation. You know, this right here, this is so powerful. It hits right at that feeling of hopelessness that can come with a diagnosis like this. But I really want you to hear this. That is not the end of the road, not even close. There are absolutely things you can do, so here's how we're going to break it down. First, we'll get a handle on the diagnosis itself. Then we'll talk about the real hope that rehabilitation can offer. After that, we'll look at some of the amazing tools out there and we'll wrap up with what it really means to live well with AMD. All right, so let's start at the very beginning. What is macular degeneration exactly? Okay, so deep inside your eye, you have the retina. And on that retina is a tiny little spot called the macula. Think of it as the bullseye, the part that handles your sharp, straight-ahead vision, the kind you need to read a book or see someone smile. With AMD, that little spot starts to break down, and that's what causes the problem with your central vision. Now, it's not quite that simple, because AMD isn't a one-size-fits-all condition. The most common type is dry AMD, and that one usually moves pretty slowly. But then there's wet AMD. That one's more aggressive because you have these tiny blood vessels that start leaking and that causes vision loss to happen much faster. So here's the bottom line, no matter which type we're talking about, the main hit is to your central vision. The crazy thing is your side vision, your peripheral can stay perfectly clear. It's that blurry or gray spot right in the middle of everything you're trying to look at that's the real telltale sign of AMD. And this is where it really hits home, right? This isn't just a medical term. It affects your day-to-day -day life in huge ways. Simple things we take for granted, like reading the morning paper, really seeing the faces of the people you love, or getting behind the wheel of a car, all of that becomes a real challenge. But that brings us to the next part. And honestly, this is the most important part. It's all about hope. Because that diagnosis is just the beginning of a new chapter, not the end of the book. There is a path forward. This is the big question, isn't it? The one that keeps people up at night. Does this mean I have to stop doing all the things I love? It's a real fear, and it can be isolating. But I'm here to tell you, the answer to that question is a definite no. And this is the answer, low vision rehabilitation. Now, this isn't some magic cure for the disease. What it is, is a smart, proactive game plan. The whole point is to learn how to make the absolute most of the vision you still have so you can keep on living your life your way. So what does that actually involve? Well, it's a totally personalized process. It kicks off with a super detailed assessment of your vision. Then the specialist will sit down and just talk to you. What do you enjoy? What tasks are giving you trouble? And from there, they build a custom toolkit for you, whether it's new glasses, training on special devices, or even simple tweaks you can make around the house. And hey, this isn't just feel-good talk. The science actually backs it up. Study after study shows that people who go through low-vision rehab report a huge jump in their overall quality of life. The proof is right there in the numbers. This stuff works. Okay, so we keep talking about these tools. What are they? Let's get into the nitty-gritty of the actual gadgets and strategies that can help you stay independent. First up, we've got optical aids. These are basically devices that use special lenses to help you see better. You've got magnifiers that are built right into your glasses, which is amazing because it leaves your hands free. There are even tiny telescopes for seeing things far away, like a street sign. And of course, you've got all kinds of magnifiers you can hold or set on a page for things like reading a menu. Then we get into the high-tech stuff. Electronic video magnifiers are incredible. They can blow up text to be huge and even flip the colors to high contrast, like bright white letters on a pure black screen, which is way easier for many people to read. And don't forget the powerful tool you probably have right in your pocket, your smartphone. They have amazing accessibility features built right in. But you know, it's not all about gadgets. Sometimes it's about strategy. Something as simple as having a good, bright lamp pointed directly at your book can be a total game changer. Using special filters, usually yellow or orange, can make things look sharper and clearer. For some people, mobility training can give them the confidence they need to get out and about safely. Now, I've gotta be real with you here. This all takes patience. It's not like you just pick up a magnifier and everything is perfect. It's a journey of trial and error. You have to practice and figure out the unique combination of tools and tricks that works best for you. And that brings us to our final section, 
Let's pull everything together and talk about the big picture, the mindset of truly living well with AMD. I just love this quote because it really gets to the heart of it. We're not looking for a miracle cure. We're looking for smart, practical solutions. It's about adapting and using all these amazing tools to create a support system that lets you not just get by, but actually thrive. At the end of the day, this is what it all comes down to. Focusing on what you can do, not on what you can't. It's about grabbing the steering wheel, staying in control of your life, and making sure you can still do the things that bring you happiness and joy. We've talked about all these paths forward, all these ways to live a full life, but the journey starts with a single step. And that first step isn't about buying a device, it's about making a choice. A choice to ask for help, to get an evaluation, and to see what's possible for you. So, what's your first step going to be? are the prismatic reading glasses. Now approximately the power is a bit higher than your normal pair of reading glasses. They start at around plus four, then go to plus six, plus eight, plus 10, plus 12. Now the difference between a normal pair of reading glasses and the prismatic pair of reading glasses is that there is a prism that is built into the glasses. This prism will enable the eyes to converge at the same time to be able to read as well. I've got my reading card here. I've got a special pair of prismatic glasses here. I put them on and then I will hold this up and then I bring it quite close to here and then it magnifies the image so that I'm able to see quite a lot clearer than what I could before. The difference with a prismatic pair is that I have to hold the, the reading chart quite a lot closer than a normal range for reading. I wouldn't be able to hold the prismatic glasses here. I would need to bring it into the correct range. So when you speak to your low vision optometrist, they can give you more information about what um, reading glass prescription to use based on your eye exam. So what we're going to talk about now is some of the bioptics, but for when you are looking at things, um, when you're looking to read. So this is a pair of glasses where if I'm looking straight ahead, I look through the top part of the lens, but when I want to read something, I would tilt my head down and I would hold my reading item that I want to see. So for example, I have an object here that I want to see clearly, and I look down at it and I can see it so much more clearer. So this is really useful for patients who are looking to be able to see without holding one of the magnifiers. Example of a bioptic, but again for close vision. And again, this is a slightly uh, stronger version of the bioptic. And so if I look down at the object that I want to see, I have to look at the working distance. So often I have to get it into place. So you just need to focus there. And then as soon as I find it, I'm then able to see quite a lot clearer than what I was before. So this is how it looks. And it does help um, patients who are struggling to see. And this again was the bioptic for distance. And again, you can see there's two parts. There's the normal lens you look through but then the telescope at the top, which gives the magnification. My name is Dr. Sal Jivraj, and I am a low vision and a neuro optometrist based in Calgary, Alberta. I'm excited to talk to you today about low vision and some options we have for patients who would like to see better for distance, intermediate, and at reading. At our practice, we have a lot of the advanced low vision options, such as bioptics for distance and reading. We have the side awareness glasses. We also have the e-scoop glasses, which can be very beneficial for patients who are looking to drive. So I'd be happy to see you at our locations in Calgary. Again, I'm Dr. Sal Jivraj, a low vision and a neuro optometrist and I look forward to um, hearing from you if you would like to get help with your low vision. Thank you and have a good day.